there's such beauty in recognizing the, the nature of reality. And um, in the Balance View training, we're given really simple tools, really practical tools, where we get to recognize the nature of reality for ourselves. And the first step is to recognize the basis of everything you're experiencing. Um, what's listening, what's hearing, what's sensing. So what, what, what hears, what listens, what experiences, what thinks, what feels, what tastes, what's, what touches, is open intelligence. And if you just stop thinking for a moment and recognize that there's an alertness, there's something that's aware of the next thought or the next sensation or the next emotion, and it's really important that you identify that for yourself. And this intelligence is naturally present. So you don't need to do anything to achieve it. Nobody can give it to you. Nobody can take it away. But in a short moment, what you're doing is just acknowledging that or recognizing that it's naturally here, naturally the case, always present. And then there is the suggestion that you repeat the short moment of just stopping the descriptions and recognizing the presence and the openness of your intelligence. So you can just repeat that recognition again whenever you naturally remember. And if you forget about open intelligence, just stop describing, relax mind and body, and recognize what's looking. You don't need to try and name it or describe it, you just rest as it, relax as open intelligence. And the first benefit is immediate, because there is a sense of relaxation because what I had been trained to do, um, it's a term that we use in this training, is um, reification. And it just simply means describing every single thought and emotion, and then describing our descriptions about every single thought, emotion or sensation, and then talking about our descriptions of our descriptions of our descriptions, and writing about them, and describing and describing and describing until what we seem to experience is a world made up of all of these isolated objects and we're somehow an isolated subject interacting with all of these descriptions that are out there. And that is really difficult, it's really challenging, because then I need to deal with all of these different descriptions by describing them further. And it's an endless cycle of more and more thinking, more and more describing, more and more struggle. And I learned certain descriptions about how things should be and how things shouldn't be. Um, particularly personally. So how I should feel and how I shouldn't feel. Um, I have hopes and expectations about I'll always be happy. Or today I'll be happy. Or tomorrow I'm... I'm afraid that I won't be happy, or tomorrow I'm afraid that I'll be lonely, or I'm afraid that I'll be let down by somebody really close to me, or... And all of these descriptions then become the focus of our energy and our activity, trying to manage them, and trying to ensure that we have the ones that somehow we've learned we should have, and we don't have the ones that we've learned we shouldn't have. And then we try and manage our experience to fit those ideas and those concepts and it's really really hard work and the benefit of in a short moment just allowing everything to be just as it is is immediate because I basically step off that hamster wheel of continually working at my experience to make it look a certain way I just take a break from that so there's a sense of, of, of relief immediately I can just relax as I am right now. I don't need to busy myself with all of my hopes and fears about how things might be in the future. I don't need to be completely occupied with all of my thoughts about how things were in the past, describing everything, thinking about everything, comparing how it is with how I think it should be. It's a short moment of just complete perceptual openness cuts that whole game at the root. I just step off the hamster wheel. As the suggestion is to take a short moment and then repeat that many times whenever you naturally remember, in each short moment what I began to see for myself was that the actual nature of reality is not this hard and fast 
fixed world that I continue to describe and describe. The nature of reality is completely wide open. All of the data that are streaming, all of your experience, thoughts, emotions, physical sensations, are the dynamic energy of open intelligence. They appear spontaneously, they self-release naturally, like a, a rainbow appearing in space. So with a rainbow, we can see its colors really beautifully. It's, it's vivid and it's, you know, it's, it's obvious and we really enjoy that experience. But can we say there's anything really there? We experience it, but there's nothing actually to hold on to. There's nothing to grasp onto. And we wouldn't try to do that with a rainbow. So we take this approach of a short moment with all data streams. We allow everything to be as it is just for a short moment. And then that learned habit of jumping back into describing everything and focusing in on all of our thoughts, emotions and sensations is so strong that immediately we're back on that hamster wheel, thinking about everything, describing everything, trying to work everything out. And then we take another short moment, we relax naturally, rest naturally. And there's that openness, there's that openness of perception that had never gone anywhere. All that happens is that we collapse into the descriptions. And we repeat that recognition. And the Balance View training really provides a platform where we can explore everything. We can speak to people to clarify the nature of our own experience as open intelligence. Because it's so easy to get caught up in a description, really believing it's true. Now, with the instinctive recognition of the inseparability of whatever the current moment perception is from open intelligence in a short moment, that aligns us with reality. Because the hopes and fears are just naturally outshone by allowing everything to be as it is. And my own experience is that there is the recognition of a stability and a consistency in my own experience that isn't based on the descriptions. The descriptions are always changing. Um, and so I was thinking about the immediate benefits that that perspective and that recognition brings in relationship. Uh, in all relationships, because my experience is that the thoughts and the feelings that I have about other people are continually changing. Like, like changing all of the time. And, um, and, and, and one moment I can see someone and meet someone, it could be someone I've just met, it could be someone I've known for 30 years, and I, I, you know, it's great to see you, I'm you know, so happy to see you, and I really like this, I really like this person, you know, you know, I think we've got this real connection and all this shared history, or I just like the look on their face, or, and they seem to like me, and, and then, and then one, one sentence or one word or one look and everything changes. Everything changes and, and actually, no, they're, they're, they're quite irritating and um, no, I don't agree with their opinions anymore and I, I just need, to, I need some space or I need to get away from this person and yeah, I, no, no, get, get me out of here. And, and then they might say something really complimentary. I like the shirt you're wearing. Actually, they're quite nice, aren't they? I like them. I like them again. And, um, and, and the problem is there is if I base my relating on the ever-changing descriptions, then it's like being on a roller coaster because I'm, I'm happy and friendly and open and easygoing one minute and then I'm reserved and slightly resentful and backing off and closing down and then I'm open again. And th there's no stability in that way of relating because what we're doing is giving each of these thoughts, emotions and sensations, the data, an independent nature and are giving them this power over us. And each short moment of allowing them just to flow on by and seeing that they leave no trace in the pristine openness of mind, like the flight path of a bird in the sky. No trace. And we see that for ourselves in a short moment of allowing them to flow on by. Since that's what they're doing already, that's so easy. We just relax and allow them to be as they are. Then the basis for the relating becomes the perceptual openness, inclusive of all the data, but not dependent on the data for the way that we choose to relate. 
the way that we choose to speak, the way we act, and who we are in the world. The same could be said for the way that we relate to ourselves. Um, my descriptions about myself vary all throughout the day. Um, and it's, it's, it's really funny, this, this, this sort of commentary about who I am, how I'm doing, um, what I like, um, am I happy, am I sad, am I hot, am I, am I this, am I that. It's continually changing. And that would include the physical sensations as well. And to recognize physical sensations as also part of this indivisible expanse gives a completely different perspective on them. Um, it gives an ease and an openness around physical sensations, even physical pain. So it was really powerful for me to um, take a short moment of recognizing the inseparability of physical sensation from the vast expanse of open intelligence, instinctively. Not, not thinking about that, but just relaxing with that physical sensation and allowing it to be as it is. So for example, right now I can feel a slight, um, slight gurgling in my stomach. It's not pain, but it's something there. Something's going on there. I hope nothing's serious. You might not see me up on stage for a week if it is. But it's... I can take a short moment and I can recognize that that physical sensation is also just the dynamic energy of open intelligence. That's the only way I experience it. And in that recognition, there is the capacity to allow it to be as it is. And from that vantage, there is a simple seeing in what needs to be done, what will be of most benefit. So do I need to go and see a doctor? Do I need to consider um, other options to take care of myself, the physical health? But all of that, or maybe I just relax and nothing actually really needs to be done, it's not serious. But all of those options and all of that clarity, it, it's innate. And it comes from recognizing the fundamental basis of the description, open intelligence. The description as the dynamic energy of this open intelligence. Because if I focused in on every physical sensation, then life would be a nightmare. There's, there's always something going on in my body that I could be worried about. There's always something, and you know, if you check now, there's probably something that if you really wanted to be worried about, you know, who knows what that little sensation is in your big toe. I don't know, it's always the big toe. But um, you know, maybe it's something really serious. Maybe I need to panic. What am I doing sitting here speaking to all these people? This is, I need to do something about this. And hold on, hold on. Let's take a short <laughs> moment, recognize that that sensation all of the descriptions around it are also just the dynamic energy of open intelligence. And immediately there is a, a different perspective. From being caught up in a world of descriptions, now we see everything more clearly. We're able to make much clearer decisions, and that's another very powerful benefit and result of putting this training into practice, is the clarity of mind and the emotional and mental stability to make clear, powerful decisions to see that basing my relating, basing my decisions on the ever-changing flow of data is always confusing because they're always up and down this way and that way. When I base the decision making and I base the relating on the vastness, the openness of intelligence that's looking through your eyes right now, allowing the descriptions just to flow on by, then there is a It's, it's, it's just like a maturity of, of being. I see that most of my life I just behaved like a, like a petulant large child, you know, with the, with the thoughts and emotions being the basis for my relating. Liking someone one minute, not liking them the next. Liking myself one minute, not liking myself the next and then looking and trying to work out what the cause of that is, who's to blame, what needs to change, how do I get rid of this negativity, and to put an end to that exhausting game, just in one short moment. It's just a totally different way to live. And the more I recognize the equalness and evenness of all data, 
then even when there are thoughts of expectation or thoughts of hope and fear, firstly I can just allow them to flow on by and their grip and their power, it's just, there's just nothing there because I know that whatever happens, whether my worst fears come to pass or whether my greatest expectations happen, open intelligence will remain completely unaffected. And that is an incredible place from which to live. Because previously it was my hopes and my fears and my expectations that drove my action, that drove my relating. And now, from the stability and the openness that is the basis of all of those hopes and fears and expectations, I have a very different perspective on them. And I can still have hopes and fears and expectations, but there is an ease around them. My well-being doesn't depend on them either coming to pass or on not coming to pass. So this is the maturity of being. This is seeing reality as it actually is. Recognizing this um, ephemeral or um, transitory nature of all experience in an instinctive, direct way. This is where we take back the power from data and data become the fuel for beneficial action rather than being something that we are victims to. So it's this very distinct way of living that, that benefits all aspects of life because wherever you are, it's open intelligence shining forth data and the, the support for me is essential and has been essential because to try and do it on your own, as some of us or probably most of us have tried, is very, very difficult. But then at a point I realised, why am I trying to do it on my own? I've been coming to these meetings and every day I'm here and they talk about the four mainstays and, and I saw that when I used that support, wherever I was in the world, there were ways that I could customise that support for me. Um, I could join in with the online trainings, I could be in touch with community that way. Of course, short moments are with you wherever you go. You can take media, books or audio and listen or read those wherever you are. There are ways that you can plug in and connect and support yourself. And, and that's key, that's something that I never came across in any other teaching or training. Something that allowed me to integrate this into my everyday life. It wasn't just some amazing thing that I came across in this beautiful place in India. This was something that I could take and I could integrate into my everyday life. And that's key. This is not some, some flash in the pan philosophy. This is a way to live life. And, and this is incredible, and this is really, really potent and, and, and important. At this time in, in human history, how are we going to live our lives? What kinds of society do we want to build? Are we going to perpetuate the same old story, or are we going to make a stand for something new and potent and powerful, and really, really needed?